Welcome to our Getting Started with SMARTS webinar. So let me introduce my colleagues here. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Ross. I am the SMARTS Associate and Media Manager. And then we have uh, Michael Greschler, who is our SMARTS Director, and then Shelly Levy, who is our SMARTS Curriculum Coordinator and Trainer. Though I will say we have also all done many different things at SMARTS and also worn many hats. So we are here to answer all your questions about the program. Um, so let's see here. Okay, so this is our agenda for today. We're gonna to go over the background and history of SMARTS, who we are, what we do. Um, we're gonna go overview of our uh, two curriculum. We're going to talk about actually the measurement, measurements of student success, so kind of some of the numbers here. Um, and we're gonna talk about all the different places that SMARTS is taught in schools, at homes, in after schools, uh, all over the world. That's gonna be interesting. Uh, we're gonna talk about adapting SMARTS to your schools, because SMARTS is a very modular program, and we really, really encourage people to use it in the way that best suits you. And we're going to talk about all the supports that we give to help people do that. And then we're going to talk about all our training and support, so trainings, webinars, all sorts of things, uh, professional development, and then we'll have the Q&A. Okay. All right. What is SMARTS? So SMARTS is an acronym. It's a uh, stands for strategies, motivation, awareness, resilience, talents, and success. So it is a research-based strategy instruction curriculum that promotes lifelong strategic and self-aware learning. So that's what we're primarily gonna talk about today. It's actually two different curriculums and we'll talk exactly about what those things are. Um, and uh, mostly it's, it's based on research that um, our organization has uh, done throughout the decades even. So that's the basis there. But uh, also, just to make sure everything is clear, so um, our parent organization is the Research Institute for Learning and Development, Research ILD. And that is the organization that did all of the primary research that everything in SMARTS is based on. So they, they're kind of, they, they are our overreaching organization and SMARTS is a part of them. So then they have been uh, active for over 30 years now. Um, I quite a few, quite a bit over 30 years and actually at this at this stage. Um, and so just we want you to uh, you can always check out everything on there on where, their website, uh, www.researchild.org. I'll also put all the links to all the our various websites and everything uh, into the chat and in the email that you're going to get eventually. Um, however, we also have another organization with the Institute for Learning and Development. So Research ILD is our not-for-profit research side that does SMARTS. The Institute for Learning and Development is um, our one-on-one -on -one tutoring with students. So both Shelly and Michael are actually ed therapists. And so they meet students one-on-one -on -one now, of course, online. Um, and also and also we do it in person in Lexington, Massachusetts, uh, where, we're, uh, where we are based. Actually, honestly, I'm, if you would like to, I would love to know where everybody uh, in this uh, webinar is from, because it's always super interesting to see the kind of reach that we can have. It's one of the benefits of being on Zoom. So if you want to let us know in the chat, where you're from, uh, that's always interesting. Uh, so again, if you have a special student in your life who really needs one-on-one -on -one help and one-on-one -on -one, um, assessment, um, then the Institute for Learning and Development is where, uh, check it out. Um, so that is, uh, that is ildlex.org. Okay, and all right. So um, a background in history. So our founder, uh, our president, our director is uh, Dr. Lynn Meltzer. Um, and she is an absolute leading light in the uh, field of educational research and executive function. Um, she has done some amazing work with, if you see the books that she has right there, she's, this isn't even all of them. Um, I have to say personal favorite the, is the green book, as we call it, the promoting executive function in the classroom, which um, a lot of smarts actually came out of that initially. Um, and so it's really her research into executive function and kind of her paradigm is where we really get all of the basis of what you're going to learn about today. Okay, and I'm going to pass it over to uh, Michael Greshler. Excellent. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, and thank you all for joining us. You know, we love, love talking about SMARTS. Um, so I'm excited to share it with you today. So what you're looking at here is the executive function paradigm that really frames SMARTS. And so Dr. Meltzer developed this EF paradigm 
uh, many years ago and has tested this in some of her studies. And you know, if you've done your EF research, you'll know that these EF breakdowns are all over the place. Um, you know, I love Phil Zalazo, University of Minnesota, says one executive function inhibition. Um, Russell Barkley and Thomas Brown, famous ADHD researchers, say seven executive functions, nine executive functions. Um, so when it comes to executive function, there's an umbrella term with lots of different ways of breaking it down. Um, this EF paradigm that I'm showing you here really speaks to the heart of our philosophy at SMARTS, which is executive function is the behaviors that you are seeing. It is concrete. I love my neuroscientists. I love my cognitive psychologists, but I want to um, make it easy for teachers and for students to understand what executive function looks like in their day to day learning. So if you look at these areas, organizing, goal setting, shifting, working memory and self checking, those are concrete behaviors you can see and you're going to see how that philosophy is woven throughout the structure of the curriculum. All right. Um, now, within all of those pieces, though, is this importance of metacognition, even though we call ourselves an executive function curriculum, we're also a metacognition, a self understanding curriculum. Because when it comes to executive function, if you just tell a kid how to clean out their backpack or how to schedule their week, and they do it without thinking about why they're doing it, how that matters to their life, how you know parts of it might be easier for them or hard for them, you're not really training them to implement executive function strategies. So we don't just do executive function, we do executive function and metacognition, and that is a part of every single lesson in our curriculum. Um, and finally, the last paradigm I'm gonna throw at you this is um, Dr. Meltzer's research paradigm that is the theoretical and research basis of the curriculum. Um, basically, the point of this, you don't need a you know, master's or a PhD in education here. The point is that EF strategies don't happen in a vacuum. The use or not use of EF relates to a student's metacognition, their self-understanding. It relates to their self-concept, their belief in their ability to be successful, and the motivation and effort they're willing to put in. And I think if you take a second and think about a kid who you know is really struggling with executive function, you probably could tease out that they're also struggling with some of these components as well. And if you can think of a kid who's really kind of clicked in and learned their EF strategies, you can see how it's really influenced those other areas as well. So when we talk about smarts, we talk about, you know, remember Elizabeth talked you through motivation, awareness, resilience, talents, and success. These are the areas that we're seeking change, and these are the areas that have been tested out in our um, school evaluation studies. Um, just a little bit about the history of SMARTS. Um, so SMARTS was originally a community-based program. Elizabeth told you about ILD, Institute for Learning and Development. We originally did SMARTS as a peer mentoring program where older students work with younger students to learn executive function strategies, which was great. It was a lot of fun. We would use strategies to go apple picking or plan a menu or do an obstacle race. It was a lot of fun. And we did some school-based studies. Elizabeth actually led probably most of those on there. Um, where we did peer mentoring within schools in the greater Boston area. However, uh, it is not easy to do a cross grade peer mentoring program in a school. The scheduling is crazy. So we developed a comprehensive standalone executive function program, which is SMARTS. We piloted it in 2014 with nine schools across the country, public, private, and charter, um, and we launched it in 2015. So right when we launched it, someone said, what about elementary school? So it took us a few years, but uh, we developed, you know, Shelly was very helpful on that, uh, that helping us launch that. We developed SMARTS Elementary and we piloted that as well with public, private and charter schools across the country. And we launched that in the fall of 2019. Alrighty. Uh, Michael, can you turn the captions on, on uh, PowerPoint? You know, I appreciate, uh, I, I saw that comment and I'm going to say, unfortunately, we're using OneDrive and I don't actually know how to do that really easily. So I am feeling um, that that is an area that I definitely need to address moving forward. Um, for that person who asked about it, um, we probably, when we get this up on YouTube for the recording, we yeah. will turn on the transcript guaranteed. And um, for you, that person, or actually for any of you, if you want to have a follow up um, conversation to go over anything that was you know, a little tricky, I'm more than happy to make myself available for that. And I will turn on captioning for that piece as well. You know, that UDL piece of closed captioning is so, so wonderful. Um, we switched over to OneDrive because it made it easier for us to all work together. But I don't know how to, I, I have it on automatically for my PowerPoints and not for my OneDrive. So I, I apologize for that, but I am um, very happy to um, circle back on that. So thank you for asking. I really apologize we're not able to do it right now, but we will do it 
in the future, and I will be happy to meet with you um, offline as well. Um, just a few things about the uh, growth of the SMARTS program. Um, we are currently in, this is probably actually a couple states behind. I think we're at 46 or 47 states. We got a nice chunk of Canada. We got 21 countries. It's really wonderful to see an order come in from, you know, Romania or Thailand or Colombia. We don't have any in Antarctica yet. So if anyone, you know, any schools down there, please let, please let them know. And, and really the, the curriculum has really been growing and picking up momentum over the years. You know, we're so proud of our SMARTS educators over 2000 coming up on our thousandth school, which I am so excited about. And, you know, as someone, you know, I joined Elizabeth when we were on the, uh, some of those pilots and Shelly is one of our earliest users to really see the community grow and see it brought into so many interesting um, schools and educational settings has really been so heartwarming. So we're so excited to share smarts. We're big believers in ex the power of executive function. And we're very happy to kind of share this out with you today. All right, so Shelly is going to give you a little bit of an overview on the curriculum. Let me just hand her over that um, remote control. Thank you, Michael. That's great. So as Michael said, I'm so excited to talk about the curriculum. I, I love this curriculum, and I, I love this curriculum even before I was even working for this organization. As Michael mentioned, when I was, I was a SPED director for a private school, and I heard about this. It was just brand new. It was kind of, you know, working out the tweaks. I said, oh my goodness, I have to have this curriculum. And we brought it into our school and we were able to teach it to the entire sixth grade for the entire year uh, through the history department actually. And it was just, just so wonderful. So that, that was six years ago already. It's so hard to believe. Uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can um, we'll go forward. There we are, great. So SMART executive cur curriculum, our curriculum we have spans students from second to 12th grade. We have an elementary curriculum, um, which is more foundational, as well as a secondary curriculum, which focuses more on academic areas. However, very soon, we found that many of the lessons and uh, handouts we have for elementary really work beautifully for middle and high school students. So we will be changing this summer. It will be still used for elementary schools and elementary students. But we're going to be taking the name of elementary off of that so we can use our handouts with our middle and high school students, so they, they won't shy away from that. Um, my mouth. Okay, so our curriculum, the Structure Smarts, we have seven units, and in each unit we have between two and five corresponding lessons. So we have a total of 30 lessons, and as you can see, here are the seven units, what we go over in each unit. The first unit is an introduction to executive function strategies, talks about metacognition that Michael mentioned, some of the other vocabulary, um, how do I, how, how am how get to getting to know myself as a learner. Unit two focuses on goal setting. We teach our students the can-do goals. Unit three goes over cognitive flexibility. Then we move on to organizing and prioritizing time and materials followed by organizing and prior, prioritizing ideas and information. Unit six are remembering strategies, and we end with unit seven, self-monitoring and self-checking strategies. Um, with each lesson, there's a separate PowerPoint that corresponds with the lesson. We have over 100 student handouts, strategy reflection sheets for every lesson, and many, many extensions, which I'll talk about a little bit later that will build upon the initial lesson. The extensions are brief ways you can revisit the strategy in a 10 or 15 minute slot with very little preparation on your part. So let's look at a particular unit. This is unit three of cognitive flexibility. In this particular unit, we have five lessons. The first lesson, being flexible and shifting expectations, um, has activities related to multiple meaning sentences and words shifting perspectives in writing. We have our students take on a different lens and review, light, review different writing pieces, calling it the diagnostic lizard. Unit three is, lesson three is a very, very powerful reading strategy that we help our students understand how to identify main ideas and details in the text. And it's, it's so, so fantastic. In fact, I just used it right before this with my student, an eighth grader, teaching him this strategy for that. And we, did, we read a number of texts together. 
purposeful highlighting. We help our students being able to look at something and determine what, what, what needs to be highlighted, what is the essential details and main ideas of a particular text. And we end the unit with shifting math strategies for recognizing multiple meanings and math concepts. So as you can see, this is a very full unit and a very fun one as well. All our SMARTS lessons are modular and can be taught in any combination. So they've broken down into four, four sections or four modules, and you can break it up in any way you, you see fit. If you have uh, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, you, you divide it in the way that makes sense for your students. And we also help you deciding, well, what should you teach at what point of the year? So we have many ways to help you choose the lessons, sift and sort the strategies. It can be by academic task. It can be by the time of the year. Maybe there's a parent conference coming up and you wanna have some information for that. It can be looking at your students' individual needs or our lesson focus areas, which we're very excited about. In the secondary curriculum and soon to be coming in the elementary curriculum, we have a lesson sorter. So let's say you're gonna, you wanna find some lessons focusing on um, self-advocacy and organized writing. You would click those things and a list of lessons would appear from the curriculum that you could choose. We have here mon monthly planning and monthly planning covers the lesson focus areas, which is highlighted in purple of self-advocacy, organized writing, time management and planning, prioritizing and estimating time and test taking. And as I mentioned, this is not a feature currently of elementary, but we're hard at work at it now and it will be ready for the fall. Let's look at the structure of a lesson. Each of our lessons contains a bulleted, explicit lesson plan for you to follow, follow a PowerPoint, the handouts and strategy reflection sheets. And our lessons are divided into four instructional components. So every lesson begins with an engaging, fun activator. This is a way to draw the students in, introduce the strategy and activate their prior knowledge. The next part of the lesson is the teacher modeling the strategy with the students with an activity. Then we let the student practice the strategy on their own. And we always end with a reflection, thinking about what they learned, um, how they're going to apply it, and what it's going to be used for in the future. And this is a very key part to making sure that they understand the executive function strategy and that they will use it again. We found that if you don't do a reflection, it's as if you didn't teach the lesson. And we'll look more about that. Um, yes, yeah, so our secondary lessons are, we basically say it takes about an hour. Um, I did teach the, six, the sixth graders at the time. I was able to kind of squeeze things in in 50 minutes, but basically, basically it's an hour. But again, you could split that into two different days if you needed to, 30 minutes and 30 minutes. Our elementary lessons are divided into four 20 minute modules, totaling 80 minutes. And there's a lot of flexibility there. You could do a module a day, a module a week, put two or three together, whatever works with the time period that you have, quite flexible. Um, so the lesson plan, plan has, we have a one page background information with, we talk about the concepts we're gonna be discussing, definitions, best practices, and this is for you as the teacher. Then the lesson itself has semi-scripted format. Things are really explicitly written out for you in terms of what you need to do and when, and um, with each component, which I, which I had mentioned before. Elementary is a very similar. It has that one page description, background information, the scripted format for the lessons, and then the four modules written out. And in addition, we always have a strategy shout out to talk about the lesson, part of the reflection, and the extensions. Many of our lessons already have extensions written into them. As I mentioned before, each lesson comes with its own PowerPoint. And this is something teachers find quite useful because it is completely flexible. You may change, add, take away anything. You can change the text, you can change the pictures, you can drop slides, you can add slides and really make it your own for each lesson and what your students need. Um, when we, for certain strategies, I mentioned skim and scoop before, we have an animated uh, way of showing you and the students 
how they're going to be doing the skin and scoop strategy. And of course, there, there, are, there, there, there is the ability to use closed caption and accessibility. Yep. All right. So all of our handouts for both are fillable PDF forms. So you may use them in person or online. All of our files work with any learning management system, such as Google Classroom, Blackboard, Canvas. And our secondary curriculum, in addition to the original lesson, we have a challenge handout for students who maybe need to be pushed a little bit more and want more of a challenge in terms of learning the strategies. Elementary, ha elementary handouts also um, have our fillable forms can be used on any LMS. And um, what we've done is we've packaged all the handouts per lesson in one file. So you as the teacher, when you go in, if you want to print it out or upload it to Google Classroom, all the handouts for one lesson are there together, packaged together. Teachers have found that very, very helpful. And in addition, we have a workbook. So this workbook for the elementary curriculum has all 106 handouts, so they're part of the curriculum, found in, the, found in one place for your students to use. And it's also in color. So many teachers find that very useful for the students to have one workbook to have all of their lessons to refer back to. And I mentioned before, the very key point of every lesson is a strategy of reflection because we want to promote that strategic mindset. We want them to be thinking about themselves as learners and how they're going to be using these strategies moving forward. Um, we, we have, at the end of every lesson, we have a number of strategy reflection sheets you may choose from, both in the elementary and in the secondary. Many times we have an activity or a discussion that also is part of the reflection process, or certainly you're free to create your own. The elementary curriculum also has something called Bridge to Home, which are letters that we can send home to our parents explaining what we learned over the lesson, have the child present that to their parents and have a question at home for them to discuss. Again, what we'd like to see is not only to see these strategies used in the classroom, but we'd love to see the transference to home as well. And last but not least are our lesson extensions. So for the secondary curriculum this year, we have added over 400 extensions to the lessons already in the curriculum. As I mentioned before, these are five or 10 minute, 15 minute, ways of extending the lesson you've already taught. And on, from the teacher's perspective, it takes very little uh, planning. There's not many things you have to promote. It can tie in with areas uh, of your curriculum. For example, the six priority areas, maybe you wanna do community building. Maybe you wanna work on self-advocacy or focus on projects or tests or STEM or the humanities. So that is there for you. Many of the elementary lessons have extensions, but we are in the process right now of adding many, many more, which will again be in the curriculum come the fall. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Michael. Okay, excellent. Um, thank you, Shelly. It's a big curriculum, there's a lot of stuff in there. So I saw some great questions on, how do I bring it to here? How do I bring it to there? I think we're gonna answer some of those questions, but we will, um, we will be, have, I think we should have time for some questions at the end too. All right. so. Measuring student success, how can we tell if this is working or not? Um, you know, I think that there's a, of course, we want to see grades go up. And I know that that is a temptation that people have. However, um, it's very important for us to keep our, our eye on that um, par theoretical paradigm I showed you before. So for SMARTS, when we do our evaluation studies, um, we're looking for growth in a couple areas that relate to that paradigm we talked about. Um, are students developing a more accurate understanding of their strengths and challenges as students? Do they understand why using strategies is important? And do they know how to apply the strategies that they are learning? So those are the outcomes that we kind of measure and look for success. Um, we know that some students with really high EF demands, even with some EF support, may not be getting straight A's. So we want to kind of decouple this from only looking at grades, although in our studies we do see evidence of homework completion going up, evidence of strategy use and effort going up as well. But those are kind of the key areas that we're going to use as we do some data collection. Um, so a few um, materials that we have in terms of collecting data. 
Um, this is the Medicog survey system. It was actually published in 2004, so well before the SMARTS curriculum. Um, these are surveys that are currently available in the secondary level. We have piloted them in elementary, and if you're interested in joining that pilot at the elementary level, you are welcome to uh, reach out about that. Um, there, are there are two surveys that are for the student and one for the teacher. Um, this Stratus is the strategy use survey. It asks kids, what strategies do you use in different areas of executive function? And the ME uh, stands for motivation and effort. And that asks students to rate themselves in how hard do you work in global areas as well as areas specific to um, academic subjects uh, and executive function areas. The, the tipsy maps onto the me because we know that if we ask our students to rate their motivation and effort, many of our students are going to have globally, you know, inflated or deflated views. I'm awesome at everything or oh my gosh, I'm terrible at everything and neither of those is probably very accurate. So we use the tipsy as a um, uh, objective measure to kind of address that discrepancy and then select lessons and strategies that are going to help close that gap and work on those outcome areas I showed you before. Um, so, so excited, you know, we have currently on the curriculum, we have a PDF copy as well as an online form copy, but we are hard at work um, unveiling something new for the coming year, which is a more interactive online copy that goes that generates reports both for the student and for the kid. So um, the student is going to get access to um, information on here is what your EF area of strength is and your EF area of challenge. Here's what that means. And here are some lessons that will be great for this kid. And the teacher is going to have access to a similar report for their entire class. Here is your class's areas of EF strength and challenge. And here are the lessons that are priority for them, which I think this is a wonderful way to not only do some pre and post and see how those things are changing, but also to set your instructional priorities um, and to get students involved in understanding their own profile from the very, very beginning. So we're, we're, we're hard at work on that. We're very excited to release that in the coming year. Um, strategy reflection sheet. So I know that Shelly did a great job of explaining why these are important to you, um, but we cannot bring them up enough. Strategy reflection is your formative data. This is your way of saying, is this even landing with my kids? If they can't name the strategy, if they don't understand you know, how it relates to their strengths and challenges, then we need to keep going and to figure out how can we get this strategy to really engage our students. Um, these strategy reflection sheets come with the curriculum. However, it's not that hard to you know, adapt it and do it yourself. You can do a strategy shout out, which is a simple um, you know, class discussion at the beginning or end of a lesson. You can develop your own survey. You can actually have strategy reflection sheets that parents fill out with their kids, depending on the age. So the strategy reflection is a very versatile tool, but it's essential to measuring the success of your students. Um, oh yes, I love those bridge to home letters. So let's take a second and talk about the different programs that we see. You know, SMART's such an adaptable and versatile program. We're seeing it used in many different areas. So we're going to talk through some of the most common places that we see executive function done. Sometimes I love to ask teachers, well, who, where, you know, who's, who's responsible for teaching executive function? But the truth is, in some ways, we all own executive function. So these are the tiers of EF support that we often see SMART's getting slotted into. Uh, I think this will address some of the questions that some of you have been asking in the chat. Um, starting off at that highest tier, so this idea of students who are at risk for um, executive function weaknesses. So these might be target certain target populations of students, such as you know students um, identified for special education, English language learners. Um, you know we'll see it in Title I programs in schools, etc. Right in this context. Um, SMARTS is being delivered by a support, you know, a support teacher or faculty member. So not usually a content teacher. Instruction is happening not directly in the content setting. Um, so uh, we'll see EF classes, an EF block, a resource room. If someone has um, one to one time or something like that, they can bring SMARTS in and they can customize the lessons that they're picking based on the needs of the particular student or small group of students. The next tier down is bringing executive function into an academic context with a high EF demand. So there are just certain times of year or certain tasks that are going to overwhelm the EF demands of everybody in the class. So kids who are vulnerable are going to probably struggle a bit more, but everybody might struggle with the EF demands of what's going on. Thinking about transition years, sixth grade, ninth grade, I'm going to college. 
um, certain tasks, uh, project-based learning or research papers, um, standardized test taking or finals. Those are just tasks that are going to demand the tax the EF demands of everybody, including teachers, and they're a great place to bring in smart strategies. So once again, you can select strategies in this case that are more aligned with the task, and then you can use those strategies to um, kind of weave it through. And the final tier is executive function kind of woven into the structures and systems of the school. The truth is that EF is a part of every um, aspect of the day, from the schedule to handing out homework to getting homework back in to making sure that kids have the EF strategies to navigate the academic demands of the reading assignments that they face, of the social challenges that they face, right? And the way that we structure the school day and the way that we support our teachers and disseminate our EF expectations influence the EF um, that our kids are successful on or not so successful on. So when we are working at this tier, um, by the way, this is like, this is a tier a couple of years down the road. So most people start at that top tier or the second tier. This is a tier that we work on with teachers or in schools that are really thinking a bit bolder. But um, in this tier, we develop an executive function framework that really sets standards across multiple grades and helps both teachers and students and potentially parents understand you know, what EF strategies am I teaching at this level? What are the outcomes I expect to see? How can I prepare them for the frame, you know, the standards that they're approaching later on? Um, so this is, like I said, a little more involved, but very, very powerful. This is a way to bring executive function across buildings, across districts, and we help teachers and schools um, do this piece as well. Um, so now thinking about these different settings and just talk about price for a second. So our pricing model is based on per teacher. Okay, so each teacher needs to hold a license, but for every teacher that's holding a license, they can use this materials with all the students that are kind of on their caseload. So um, as you think about the ways of bringing smarts into your school or organization, you might think about how this model matches what you do. We've seen schools that have kind of your designated EF teachers um, and who might, you know, kind of float or bring executive function into different areas. We've definitely seen a very promising model of identifying that EF team to begin. And what that does is it helps you kind of understand what the EF needs, what the home runs are, what the challenges are before kind of going bigger. Um, the licenses are annual and they come with, you know, some all access to those tools, access to some support that we'll discuss a little bit later. And of course, any updates to the materials are automatic as well. Um, now the prices, the price changes after five um, discounts kick in. We also do packages that involve, you know, customized PD or coaching or this or that. So that 595, 599 is just the starting price for one license for one teacher. But, you know, but definitely let us know in the evaluation what you're thinking and we can discuss, you know, what a customized quote or price would look like for the implementation that you have in mind. Um, okay, so now would probably like blown your mind. There's like 30 lessons, all these handouts, there's 400 extensions, Shelly said, can you believe that? There are surveys, um, you know, I love how modular, I love how adaptable it is. However, sometimes when you say that, people's eyes are like, oh my gosh, because one of the best things about SMARTS is that it saves teachers time. But here I am telling you that you've got to develop your own customized scope and sequence. Well, that doesn't save you any time, but don't worry. We've developed a lot of resources and tools that you can use to help develop that and another thing I will say is, you know, do not be a stranger. We are here for you. So if you are putting together your plan and you're like, wait a minute, I'm not sure what to do about X, please reach out. I'm going to review some of these tools, but we're not going to go anywhere. So please reach out with your questions and comments um, as you just as you decide to figure this out. Oh, look, I just said all the things that are on this slide. Um, who put this PowerPoint together? Um, okay, let's look at some of those. So a few resources that are just, you know, kind of starting points, really easy to kind of wrap your mind around. A curriculum overview. Here is a document that has all the lessons in the curriculum and the outcomes that they address. And the SMARTS planner. Here is a calendar that lays out the year. What lessons do you want to um, address as we go forward? Okay, so this is kind of the base starting places. Now we have that lesson focus order. Remember, Shelly mentioned this um, before. So lesson focus order says, okay, what are my focus areas? I need flexible thinking and prioritizing. Click, click. It will give you lessons. You click those lessons, it takes you straight to the lesson. This is excellent if you're doing one-on-one -on -one stuff. 
um, you can find it in two seconds. But it's also good in terms of thinking long term. If you have a reading project coming up or a, a project based learning initiative and you want to slot some things in different spots, this is a great way to find your lessons available for secondary and will be available for elementary in the coming school year. Um, Finally, we have these getting started packets. So the getting started packet is a five step process for developing the perfect implementation plan for your school. It takes you through um, understanding the content of the curriculum, selecting units and lessons, scheduling the year, teaching it, and then reflecting and sharing and deciding your plans for next year. Um, you can't probably see this too well, but what it, what it really does that I like is it talks through what could smarts look like in different settings? You know, if you only have 30 minutes a week versus if you want to do an EF boot camp model at the beginning and end of the year. So those are, we talk you through some of the pros and cons of some common implementation um, plans, as well as some different ways you might group the lessons. You know, we group our lessons based on EF area. Well, that might not be how you want to do it. You could select lessons that are great for um, studying for tests or that address social emotional outcomes or if you're doing elementary and you need and your kids are you're talking k12 these kids you know literacy skills are not there yet um, lessons with a low reading demand that are perfect for the younger grades okay so this also has some suggestions in sorting your lessons that way as well so the getting started report is really your hand holding process of planning out your implementation um, however we also have a getting started uh, you know, oh, that's a getting started packet. This is a getting started report. Apologies for that. Um, getting started report is just a two page document. You fill out a survey. We will get back to you with two pages of customized suggestions. So this piece is a little more, you know, asynchronous as the kids are saying these days. Um, this piece is customized directly to you with two pages of suggestions that you can use to navigate that process. Um, but remember, we are here for you. We will help you develop your customized plan. I will, I'm happy to share, you know, someone said, well, what, you know, I saw in the chat, well, what's good for ninth grade and what's good for 10th grade? Well, I cannot answer that for you directly because every school is different. The demands of ninth grade and 10th grade might vary in your school. I'm happy to not only share those resources we just talked about, but talk about the ways that other schools have done it as well. So no matter what your question is, um, we will help you find the answer. Okay. And who's are you starting this one elizabeth or yeah oh, absolutely okay. so okay so training and support um so excellent you've been a fabulous audience so far ps just uh busily answering questions in the chat That's true. so um this is kind of you're kind of almost getting the uh the preview of some of our training options today during this webinar so um we actually specialize a lot in doing uh training videos so there are videos that go along with uh, every single one of our units, they kind of give an overview of the executive function uh, uh, cogs that we're talking about, uh, starring yours truly. So, you know, if you like my face, there's more of it. Um, and uh, so those are all, all there. And then also we have a whole bunch of uh, trainings about how to use the program um, that are also included in uh, the SMARTS curriculum. You can find those all once you have a license Basically, you sign into our SMARTS page and it opens up all these other sort of avenues of things that you can, uh, the, all the planning documents and all of these trainings and things like that. So a lot of those are actually free for SMARTS users. Um, just also FYI, I'll put these things uh, into, the, into the chat at the end. We do have a bunch of free webinars that are already up on our YouTube channel, which you are welcome to go and just check out anytime that you like. So you have also a bunch of those things as well. Uh, okay. Also, we have a uh, we are also have paid trainings that we do throughout the year. Um, we just finished a whole bunch of them that really go into the, like the nitty gritty of like how do you use cognitive flexibility uh, in your classroom, and we go into actually the smarts lessons that we uh, use those in, and so they are extremely focused. Um, and so I'm actually just going to put into the chat um, the link to this training. So we have a summer summit that we do every year that uh, is, again, very focused um, on uh, SMARTS and executive function. So that uh, there's a link to that into the chat. Um, and so those, if I, uh, I'm just gonna actually give you the exact dates. So that's four chess sessions starting um, in, on July 27th through August 5th. 
Um, and then we also, and that is at that link I put in there, we also have a SMARTS workshop, which again is another four sessions and that starts in August. Um, and however, though, if you need, if you needed training like right now, um, we also make available all of replays of all of our trainings that are also available sort of on our courses site. And so those are available uh, for purchase whenever you like. Um, so, and then <laughs> we also do a massive executive function conference that that's, that's this fall this year. Um, and that is uh, where we, we do stuff about our own work, but we also have um, invited uh, lecturers from all over the world. And that's a sort of like two day extravaganza. Um, and those are things that also uh, you can participate with uh, there with replays and things like that. So that's a, there's a lot of uh, different types of uh, support that we offer. So we I really have any things that we have uh, something for everyone. Um, so uh, if somebody can't wait to, uh, to attend the conference this year, it's our, uh, our wonderful colleague, Caitlin. Uh, okay, and so then, excellent. Um, and so then also, separately, we had a couple of questions about this in the chat uh, earlier, so I hope this will answer them, is that, so you are welcome if you decided to purchase a SMARTS license. Um, you are welcome just to use that license um, on your own, however you would like. However, we also offer services where you can uh, purchase additional professional development um, with, uh, with many of our staff, including all of us here today, um, where we can sort of uh, talk about specifically all the things that your teachers uh, need. And we, it's a big range is really the thing. So it's like you could uh, purchase, you know, one training session with us. That's great. You could also purchase for us to actually work on Zoom with all of your teachers. In non-pandemic times, you could even have us come out and do a full training in person for all of your teachers. And those can be, um, I mean, again, we do them from one hour all the way up to Gosh, I actually don't even know what our highest amount of hours that we have, but but you know as much as you want. Yeah, so uh, we're we're very we're a small company, and we are very focused on serving the needs of our users. So it's more like if you had a need, we could probably talk about it and figure out a way that we could do that for you. Um, and then, uh, as I say, there's. And also we, we have people who come back after they have used the, our, our system for a while and then have questions about it. And we can kind of give you uh, our advice on how to make the most of the program. Uh, so anything that either of you wanna add, cause you do a lot, you both do a lot about uh, the sort of PD with teachers. Yeah, I mean, just to the point that Elizabeth said, you know, we customize what we do. So if we do uh, on, what used to be called on-site PD, and now it's very virtual. We work with the administrators to lay out the agenda. We work to um, lay out, you know, kind of what our goals are, how can we track it, what resources can we um, weave in. Um, so, you know, to that point, you know, it's every time is kind of tailor-made, let's say. Yeah. I just saw someone put a question in the chat. And so the PD doesn't come if you buy a license. However, uh, well, two things. One, we're here for you. So if you have a question, we love being uh, contacted. And we do, for, with new users, we do are happy to speak with you on phone or via Zoom, you know, for a half an hour to go over and answer your questions. Yeah. But that being said, um, you know, we never turn down an email. We, we, we answer everything. As, as Michael likes to say, we, we're very friendly. We like mail. We like to hear from you. We like to hear the good, the bad. We, we are, you know, we, we live and breathe this. We want our students to learn about, learn these skills, these EF skills, which are so important for them to be not only successful students, but for successful people in life. So we are available. And we do have some base things. We have yeah. the, all those recordings of the videos that Elizabeth pointed yeah. out. Um, we do make available to everyone free of charge. And then we have the smarts conversations, which I think are coming up. I'm, I'm going to talk about that. All right, great. Yeah, so that'll be, that's actually on the next slide. So, and those ones are included in this in the smarts license. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Good All right. You. Okay. And then um, also we, uh, we have a blog that both Michael and I and others uh, uh, 
Caitlin LaCommons also writes for. Um, and uh, we that is entirely free for anybody. So if you're interested in checking that out. Um, also, we uh, we post frequently on YouTube and on Facebook and on Twitter and everything like that. So again, if you're looking for some uh, some materials that you could access like literally right now, that is that is a good place uh, to get more information. I'm actually going to put the uh, free webinar replays uh, on YouTube into the chat uh, right there. And I'll just put our website again where you can access all of our uh, blog posts and things, uh, things of that nature. And again, uh, you feel free to reach out to us too, because uh, this is a good way to get in contact with us quickly if you have specific uh, thoughts. All right, I'm going to hand that over to Shelly. Great. So Michael mentioned before, we have a monthly newsletter. Again, we want to be connected to the smarts community. We are a community where we talk about certainly any sort of events that are coming up. Also, what lessons you might want to consider to be teaching this point of year. Uh, we, we highlight some of our blog, recent blog articles as well. Uh, and really just as a way to communicate with you on a monthly basis, let you know what's happening smarts wise that you may not have, have noticed at, on the website. So that's one way we stay connected. Oh, Shelly, you got muted. I don't know who did that. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I, I I think I pretty much said all of this. Again, as Michael said, it's it's uh, oh, no, this is a smart sense conversation. So the conversations we've implemented this year uh, on a monthly basis. It this is free to any smarts user, and it's an hour a month. And we we choose a topic, but truthfully, if you get if you join, we will talk about anything that's on your mind in terms of implementing smarts. Um, how to do it, We've, our topics are, could be goal setting, it could be project-based learning. Um, we're gonna be talking about end of the year, end of the year and, and goal setting coming up in a couple of weeks, but it's a way for us to stay connected. And it's, it's really essentially a coaching session. It's the same as a coaching session. And this is included in your, in your SMARTS um, license. This is not an additional fee. This is really open to anyone who is a SMARTS user. And we actually hope that you will join us because you know we can all learn from each other and we learn from you. So it's always a very lively, fun time. Excellent. Yeah. Um, okay, so I know we've thrown a lot at you. Someone was asked about the replay and the links. Yeah, we're gonna send you replays. We're gonna send you links. You got some time to kind of process things. You can ask us some questions. Oh, can I see that overview? Oh, can I see whatever? You know, this is an ongoing conversation. Um, we do have a little time for Q&A, but as we end into that, I just want to kind of reiterate, you know, SMARTS, it's a very powerful tool in the world of executive function materials. You know, it's good. I mean, we're very proud of how adaptable it is for different settings, a wide range of students from elementary through high school into college. You know, there aren't a lot of things that come with the same sorts of data collection and training opportunities and opportunities for you to meet and learn with other teachers. So, you know, we are really passionate in the SMARTS community about empowering kids, empowering teachers and getting executive function out there. You know, I wish someone taught me to use a planner. I wish someone made me enjoy cleaning out my backpack or, use, you know, planning out my day. Um, so that is a journey that we want to take with you. Uh, Shelly already said it. Don't be a stranger. You know, we are here for you. We are here for your questions, comments, and concerns. We are here to help you kind of figure out how can this work in my setting or, you know, how you ever seen X before. You know, we have got a lot of those questions in the past year. Um, so that's kind of the big takeaway I want to leave you with. Um, we did save a few minutes for questions. Yeah, we got a couple. So if you have any questions that haven't been addressed, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, and those are our emails right there. So you can see how friendly we are. We're even giving you our emails. Um, I do want to touch on, oh, Elizabeth, you have a ending spiel, right? Yep. Okay, go for that. And then there's one question I'm already ready to answer. But go All right, that. wonderful. Also, so I've just put the evaluation um, link into the chat. This will also be in the email that we send you, but you know, it's always a good idea. People often want to put their thoughts down immediately right after. So I would encourage you to do that. Um, and again, the that link there, you just fill that out. Um, and we really, really, really value your feedback because honestly, already I have now signed us up for captions, which are now available, which is amazing. Um, uh, and uh, so 
uh, we really value that. Also, if you would like a fancy certificate that said that you attended this, uh, this webinar, uh, those are $15 and you indicate that you would like that by filling out the evaluation and clicking on the appropriate part of that. But you don't need one of those. You will get an email from us with all the information that will also say that you attended this. So, um, excellent. Uh, so, okay, uh, yes, questions now. Go all ahead. right, so uh, one thing about that certificate, uh, if you just fill out the evaluation, you get an email that says, hey, you attended this thing at this time, which is sufficient. Sometimes people use these for their hours. If you do that email, that will that should satisfy. But some people really insist they want their own fancy certificate and it does take us processing time and that is the reason for the extra fee. But the email should do the trick for you, okay? Um, so the questions that we are seeing are actually around um, teaching virtually, that hybrid instruction. Someone said, my courses are mostly asynchronous and someone said, I'm using the materials in Google Classroom. So I'm going to do Google Classroom one early, easier. Um, and 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 uh, for the person who said that, I encourage you to email me directly around this if you're having trouble. Um, you should not need to recreate anything on whatever LMS you're using. For Google, you need to open the slides using Google Slides, and it will automatically convert into Google Slides. Yeah. So I appreciate um, I appreciate how how much of a pain that must have been. Um, try that out and reach out to me. Um, our materials, especially the PDF handouts, they are usable in any LMS that there is, but you do kind of have to navigate, okay, well, what is it like when I assign something? Whatever headache you're having, we've already discussed that with another school. So please don't suffer in silence. Let's suffer together, okay? Um, someone said something about asynchronous instruction. I do think doing executive function asynchronously is going to be a big, big challenge. A reason that the kids are struggling with executive function to begin with is they don't necessarily know how to apply the strategy to the challenge that they're facing. So we need to really make sure that we're setting them up for success. Um, yes, so, so there was a guess in the chat. Well, okay, I could record myself going through the PowerPoint and then assign the handouts for the kids to do independently. Yes, that, that can work. Um, we worked with a school in Boston to do just that. If you do that, I encourage you to really break the lesson down and spread it out. So giving those checkpoints, we either do the activator and they watch me do the activator and then they do the activator and then we can kind of check in with some comments from the teacher. Um, or maybe even do the activator and guided and then, and then the check in, etc. So um, look for those opportunities for touch points because the more you ask a kid to do asynchronously, the more chances that those EF breakdowns are going to interfere. But it can be done. Um, and once again, don't be a stranger. Happy to chat about that directly. Um, okay, I see some questions around costs that have been answered in there. I do encourage you to reach out um, either in email or using the evaluation form. Whatever sort of um, implementation you have in mind, we're happy to talk through with you to come up with the most cost-effective way of trying that out. Um, I do encourage you, I love leadership teams. We love pilot teams with SMARTS. It really helps you understand um, how you can uh, address it, you know, how you can kind of weave this out through your school using, you know, coaching, training and support, using some free resources, et cetera. So please don't, you know, hesitate to reach out and ask us to do some of the work for you in terms of um, mapping that out. Okay. Indeed. I, I want to point out too, so like our initial rate is higher for the, for the first registration is higher than the yearly kind of re-up rate. Yeah. The yeah, re-up rate's like rates are 375 right now. Um, so depending on which curriculum you have, as opposed to that that initial price. And of course, that initial price is for one license. It goes down significantly when you get above five licenses. Um, and yeah, I honestly, I always use the Smarts PowerPoints in Google Slides myself. And generally you can just upload them, no problem. If that's a particular, if something hinky is happening there, you can definitely contact us and we can kind of like do a little tech uh, uh, and I also wanted to, we have a training coming up in the, in the summer. That's the bridge to home. Um, we're doing that one again, aren't we not? Aren't we not? Which is, is has a lot of sort of virtual uh, tips and tricks on how to use smarts. Um, and we also have a replay of that that we did earlier this year that if somebody wanted that, we could certainly set you up with it. Um, all right. Well, I, I gotta be very cognizant of people's time. So we are getting to the ending point. So I think we're gonna stop there. 
Um, I see there's, a, there's another question in there about adapting materials. Will you please just copy down my email and connect with me right after this? I'll get you some thoughts either tonight or tomorrow morning. I'm happy to troubleshoot that with you. Um, for the rest of you, I hope we've planted some executive function seeds. Um, make sure to try the free lessons. Make sure to reach out and request more materials and more information. Um, check out some of those webinars. Follow us on YouTube so we can become famous like all the, you know, <laughs> kids, kids are these days. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, thank you for joining us tonight. Watch for the recording and for the follow-up information. Um, I think we should get the recording out hopefully by tomorrow, and then we'll follow up with everything else you ask um, throughout the rest of the week. And, you know, I really look forward to hearing from you or seeing you at a future Smarts event. So thank you all for joining us, and thank you to Elizabeth and Shelley for helping run this today. Thank you, Michael, and thank you all so much. Have a good day. All right. See y'all later.